Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and today I wanted to make a video about um, some new nodes that I've added to my geometry node assets. Um, they're all nodes to do with building roofs. Um, several months ago when I first released my the build nodes for my geometry node assets, I had tried to make a roof generator and hadn't been happy with any of the results because with all of my nodes I want them to make sort of generic things but give you a lot of flexibility in how you can style it. And while it's not too hard to make a roof generator that makes a particular style, um, I was having trouble coming up with something that was generic enough but could also um, make a detailed enough roof that it was interesting, if that makes sense. Also the problem of what kind of input is fed into the roof generator that the roof is generated from was a big challenge and I tried a number of different things that I wasn't happy with. Um, if you have, if you draw like a face or a plane, some flat surface that you're building the roof on. It's like how do you decide where the ridge lines are and what direction they run. Um, if you try to use curves to define like a ridge line then it's hard to edit like the size of it and how do you make sure that the edges of the roof like reach properly to the walls that they're over, things like that. Anyway, long story short, when I re first released the build nodes I hadn't come up with anything that I thought was worth releasing as far as making roofs. And so of course there were a lot of comments asking about roofs. Um, and my response to all of those comments was basically, well, it's kind of hard. But um, anyway, so a few weeks ago, I started experimenting with some node groups, um, trying to make one that could add like loop cuts, like subdivide a mesh only in one direction. And I got some interesting results from that, but it doesn't work well with ingons and triangles. It gets really messy and just breaks. So I haven't really finished anything with that yet. Um, but it was kind of interesting. And then last week, someone asked again about the roofs, and I had this idea. I was like, I wonder if you could use that subdivision idea as a way of finding the ridge lines. So I started experimenting with the roof generation idea again and ended up coming up with a way of creating a base mesh that was um, I thought was pretty powerful. But then I quickly ran into the problem of um, I had this node group that was a mile long. Like you literally could scroll two pages on the modifier panel and to have to see all the settings. And I really didn't like that because on the one hand I wanted the roof generator to be generic and to have all of these options so that you could configure it to make whatever kind of roof you wanted to make. But on the other hand, um, when you have that many settings, it's so hard to find the one you want to change to make the roof you want that the, start, the node starts to become unusable. Um, but then I came up with an, another idea of a way to make the r build roof node modular where it was split into multiple modifiers and you could like stack them on top of each other to where you can use the build roof modifier to sort of model your base mesh roof and then you can add all of these details, whatever details you want onto it with sort of this extendable um, roof modifier system. So that's sort of how I got to this point where I have these nodes here. So I want to go through and show you what they all do and um, talk about how I think you could use them. So the first one's just a bonus node which I can go over really quick. It, um, all, it takes a, a mesh and finds the boundary of it or it takes a curve and um, just fills it with uh, with faces. So if we turn this off, you can see this is just an edge, and it will turn that into a curve, close it, and fill it with triangles or a ingon. You can choose to triangulate it, and then you can edit it. Um, so so that's just a little helper node that I've used in some of these other nodes. So this is the build roof node. Um, this file is the one that you will download with all of the nodes in it, and it will include all of these examples, so you can sort of experiment with and see how um, this final result is built. But I think the best way to go through this will be um, sort of step by step all of the different modifiers. Um, I guess that's the first thing to note. This is made up of multiple different modifiers. The um, base roof mesh just looks like this and then we add all of these details onto it with additional modifiers. So first let's just go through the settings of the build roof node and sort of show what it's possible to create with it. Um, I, I guess the first thing I should say is there are some types of roofs it can't make. It can't make roofs that are sloped on all four sides. So it can't make like cone-shaped tower roofs or anything like that. Um, it will primarily only work on rooms with four walls or something where you can create a dividing ridge line through the room. Um, it is possible to create deformed or curved buildings and to have the roof lines go different directions. Um, the walls don't have to be perfectly flat and I can show how you can add all sorts of crazy shapes to um, the roofs that you make. But just so everyone's aware of what it's able to do from the outset, um, it's only able to make gabled roofs but you have a lot of control over um, which direction all the ridge lines run and how tall they are and shapes and things like that. Alright, so if we go all the way back here we'll just go through these settings one by one. 
The first one is the roof surface material. So you can pick that to be whatever you want and it'll put that texture on the roof surface. The UVs on the roof are all generated and um, from the bottom edge of the roof to the ridge line is the Y axis and along the roof is the X axis. Then there's an option for the um, resolution of the roof. That's mainly useful if you're wanting to add a curve to the roof. So if you set it to one, it will be very low poly. Then you can increase that and it will add cuts along the roof and you can make that whatever resolution you want. The next option is direction. If you're making any sort of roof like this where it has multiple ridge lines, you're probably gonna wanna make that an attribute and assign a vertex group to it. So this ridge direction is a vertex group and then you can assign different vertices um, to that group to make ridge lines run different directions. But if we just turn this off, you can see the direction of the roofs all change and then you can flip the direction by checking the checkbox. Um, or in this case, some of the vertices on some of these faces are assigned to the group or not, which is how you're able to get this result um, where you have control over which way different ridge lines run. By default, when you check this direction checkbox, you're choosing whether you subdivide the short edges of a rectangle or the long edges of a rectangle. So one thing to note about that is if you change the aspect ratio of the rectangle, then the direction of the ridge line switches. Then there's two sliders that control the height. Um, they both basically do the same thing. The reason there's two of them is you will likely want to assign one of them to a vertex group, or you might want to do that. That's how you can get this result here. So over here on this end, there's a low value assigned to the height vertex group. And then over here on this end, there's a high value. But with this roof, we're still able to scale the overall height, with, which is why there's two controls for height. So the idea is that one of those would be an attribute and the other one is a slider so you can adjust it um, in the modifier. Then the next control is overhang. If you have that set to zero, then the roof will start exactly on top of the edge of the face that it was created from, um, which should match your walls. And if you increase the overhang, then it will extend beyond, but where it passes over the wall should stay close. Um, look like it's a little higher than I would have liked there. I might have to look into that again, but um, yeah, I was trying to minimize how many gaps there would be between things. The next slider is shape and it affects the curve of the roof. Um, so if you have it set to 0.5, it will be a perfectly straight line. If you decrease it, it will curve concave. And if you increase it, it will curve convex. Then the next setting is solidify. And if you check that, it will add some thickness to the roof. Um, and you can choose a material to go on the back faces of the roof. And then the thickness slider affects how, um, how thick that solidify is. Then the next option is a gable wall object. Um, within the node group, that's using build walls to place walls on at the ends of the gables. Um, and you can see those. This is an example of what that object might look like. It can be whatever you want, um, but it should mostly have details running along one axis, uh, along the x-axis actually. So if we choose that object, then you can see we get walls um, in the ends of our gables, all with correct UVs and trimmed and everything. All right, so then all there is is you can name your UV map. Um, that should be able to stay. I set the default to UV map, so you should just be able to leave that alone. And then if you want to scale your UVs, um, you can scale the UVs. Then probably the most important option is this output curves. If all you want is a low poly roof, you could be done with this, but if you wanna add further details to it, you wanna check this output curves option. Um, if we turn off wireframe here, you can see that adds curves and other things to the output geometry that you can then use in additional modifiers. So the basic idea is you can create a new geometry node setup and you could name that like my roof modifier, something like that. And then in the geometry node assets, there's this build roof utility modifier, um, or node group rather, it's not really a modifier. And the idea is you can drag that into your own node group and connect it to the input geometry, and it will give you access to all the different parts of the roof. So you can get the curves, you can look at the roof surface or the gable walls, um, you can get only like the rim of the solidify, you can get the curves that go along the ridge lines, curves that go along the gable edges of the roofs. You can get curves for the lower edges. Um, so it's essentially a separate geometry node 
specifically for this roof face mesh. And then what you can do with that is you can create additional modifiers to detail your roof in ways that you might want to. So I created four of those that come with the build roof node, and those are the edge array, edge beams, surface array, and surface scatter nodes. Um, and they're sort of examples of what you could do with it. And then with the build roof utility node, you could create more with your if you had your own ideas of what you wanted to do with this roof geometry. So just to sort of show what some of those are, um, here we have a, an, a build roof edge array. It allows you to select which edges you want to use, and then it arrays an object along that edge. So here I have this gutter mesh. Um, it just arrays it along the curve, and here I've selected I want the bottom edges curve, um, but you could also put it on the gables and the ridge line if you wanted to do that. Doesn't make sense for the gutter though. So all you have for options on that are you can choose what object you want to array, and then you can choose a spacing between the instances if you want, and you can add some randomness to it um, if you want to add some character. And then all of these build roof sort of add-ons also have the output curves option. So all that means is on all of these modifiers, when I get to the end of the modifier, when I'm, I'm done creating whatever geometry I want, I take the mesh of the input geometry and I join it back into the result. And then depending on if you check this output curves option, it will either include or not include the original curves um, so whenever you get to the last modifier in the stack, you can turn that off and get like the final results. If you want to add additional details, you can keep it checked and you have that extra information about where edges are and stuff. So then I have another edge array. This one puts sort of this fence along the ridge line, exactly the same as the gutters basically. And then I have another node which allows you to add beams, which basically just does like a square curve solidify on um, any of these curves. So here, and assign a material to it. So here I have these wooden beam details on the ends of the gable edges. So just to sort of have them terminate nicely and not look quite so low poly. Um, and again, you can put that on any of the edges that you want to. That is a few additional options. You can choose to extend the curves if you want. Um, that only extends the gable curves. It doesn't, I didn't think it made sense to extend the other ones. Um, you can choose the resolution of the curve with this bevel. You can have it be, oh, that should be able to be set to zero, but you can have it just a quad or you can bevel the corners. And then end caps, UV map, you can scale the UVs. And again, you can output the curves to add additional roof modifiers. Then I have two surface modifiers. So the first one is um, a surface array. It allows you to like add shingles on the surface of the mesh. It's basically a two-dimensional array. It gives you control over the array, over the uh, row spacing rather, and it gives you control over the column spacing. And then you can offset each column by half to get that staggered look or whatever you want. You can add some noise to where the instances are placed. And you can scale the texture of that noise um, to control sort of how big the shapes are. Then tilt. Then tilt will rotate the instances in this direction. So you could tilt them more and they'd stick out more flat. And then tilt variance adds a randomness to that tilt. Then crookedness rotates the instances in this direction randomly so you can control sort of how straight the shingles are. And then scale variance um, randomizes the scale of the shingles. The higher you make that, the more random they are. And then edge margin is to control how close to the edge the instances can be placed so that you don't get the... So I was trying to manage this problem where they stick out over the edge. It's kind of hard to get a value that works everywhere, though. So that's kind of a bummer. But And then the UV map, I don't think it's used to texture anything, but it um, I needed it to... For some inf I needed to read some information off of it, so you should set that to whatever your UV map was in the build roof node. Again, output curves allows you to add additional things. The last modifier for the build roof nodes is the surface scatter. Um, it allows you to input a collection or objects and then scatter that randomly across the surface of the roof. So in that case, for this I put some leaves on the roof. You could also do it to make more random looking shingles if you didn't want them to be so orderly in rows or if you wanted to make like a thatched roof potentially that could work or I don't know. 
It's just more random than the array, but does sort of the same thing. If you crank the density up, you can cover the whole thing in leaves. Again, same controls. Tilt will... Same controls for rotation. Tilt rotates this way. The yaw rotates this way, and those both have variances on them. And then the edge margin controls how close to edges the instances are allowed to be placed, and output curves again. Also, for a quick way to make the shingles look really good, because obviously these don't look so good, just add a random island value to um, as the last modifier. It will assign random values to all of those shingles, and then you can use that in the shader to give them different UV coordinates. Let me load up my wood shader here. Then if you use that random attribute in the shader, you can just add the vector to your UV map to get a different part of the texture on each shingle and you can add it to a multiply node or something to control the value of each shingle separately from the others. So that's it for all of the nodes that come in this build roof file. Um, the only other thing I wanted to talk about was how you can use vertex groups to add um, more control to some of this. So here's an example where I have a roof like this. Um, if we select one end of this, go to the vertex group and set the height to be one, and then go to the other end and set the height to be like 0.1 or something. You can see we get this result. And then if we select all of these vertices, we can change the ridge direction to be across the short edges of the face as opposed to the long edges. Then we can add some subdivisions in here. And then we have to undo. And then we have to undo our ridge direction because now it's going the wrong way. Should have thought of that first, I guess. And then if you select um, this. Then if we select this end here, we could make the height like 0.75 or something. The height, not the ridge direction. Could make this one a little higher. So you get that sort of shape. Then you can scale. The other thing is the height is based on the length of the edge. So scaling the length of the edge also affects the height. So by tweaking some of these vertex groups, that's how you can get some of these crazier shapes. Um, it's also possible to have additional roofs coming into this, and they don't have to be straight. You can sort of rotate them any way you want. Um, if you get too crazy of a shape, like right here, you can, you can end up where you have a result that for whatever reason the boolean doesn't work, and so you have a hole. So if that happens, usually tweaking it slightly can fix it, which is kind of annoying. I wish it just always worked, but it's a boolean, and booleans are unpredictable. The other thing is on the inside, the, the boolean doesn't always make a nice result, like you can see here. So in this case, I think moving this further away so that, the, so that this corner is outside of the mesh as opposed to inside of it would help with that. Yeah. But you still get this, this face shouldn't be here. I don't know. Booleans are a pain. I can never get the result to be clean after I use a boolean. So just be aware of that. It might require some fiddling to get exactly what you want. All right. I believe that is it. Um, all of the new nodes are available in my Geometry Node Assets collection via the links in the description, either on Blender Market or on Gumroad. In the complete collection, they're not in the free version that's on Gumroad. If you already have the complete collection, then um, they should be available to you already. And I've also updated my website on the, the nodes page that shows all of the nodes and what they do. There's now 59 nodes, so please feel free to check all of that out. Um, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.